It isn't often that a TV show gets renewed for a second season after the first season has only just started airing. But when the premiere episode is the network's most watched debut ever, it happens. That's the story of FX's new show, The Americans, about undercover Soviet agents in the 80s, which has already been renewed for 2014. You already know its star, Matthew Rhys, from ABC's Brothers and Sisters, or if you're in the UK, from many more roles than that. Matthew is with us. Matthew, thanks for being here. Thank you, you for having me. You are a Welshman. You I are am. playing a Russian, playing an American. Yes. Don't American viewers have the right to watch real Americans play fake Russians playing Americans? This is what I, I am continually told on the street day to day mm. in this day and age. And Do people get surprised to hear that you're not American? Uh, yes, to a... Uh, to a small, yes, to a small degree. Um, it's not, I was, I think there was a, a degree of that, me being outed in that such way uh, when I did Brothers and Sisters. So, um, so yeah, there are a number of Americans who now know that I'm, I'm t like your good self, taking jobs from perfectly good Americans. Yes, although I don't hide it, unlike you. I'm, I'm upfront about the fact that I'm not American. I don't hide behind the veneer of being a fake Russian, fake American, fake Welshman. No, I mean, I, pu publicly, I don't do that, but in my- Wouldn't that be funny if, my chosen did, if we just had to conduct the entire interview and you, yes. you had to put on a bad American accent, or a good American <laughs> accent the entire well, time? Well, yes, if, yeah, if it was bad, then maybe I, I wouldn't be getting away with it. Yeah, you know, and it is very good. And also, it's obviously the type of American accent that a Russian undercover spy would have, had, would have learned, right? So it's a kind of, perfectly generic American accent. I like to think so. And it also gives me that beautiful leeway that if I do get it wrong, I can just say, well, I'm not American. He's Russian. He's Russian. You didn't have that luxury in Brothers and Sisters. I didn't, no. I think I just, w I, I went into the American's audition with a Welsh accent. They thought it was Russian. <laughs> I think, I think it was as simple as that. That's the good thing about working in America. They don't know where any accents are from. No, they said, where are you from? I'm from London all the time. That's uh, right, yeah. I thought. <laughs> and I'm from Kiev. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, 5.1 million viewers on the debut episode for a cable channel like FX. That is huge numbers. Uh, did it come as a surprise? It or did. Did you I, sort of feel the, the, the well building? I, was, I certainly felt that FX um, and all power to them did a sterling effort in, in making sure a number of people knew about it and you know they did plug and promote to their best ability so yeah. so hats off to the the PR machine that was it, uh, it did its job I think mm. and presumably it's quite a good show to actually be able to promote you're putting all the benefit on the PR team perhaps the actual creators of the show have <laughs> No, 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 it's, no, it's, it's rubbish. Right. Yes, yeah, it's all. But, but the taxi ads were Sm brilliant. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, Smoke. Take, let's, Smoke take, a, let's take a look at uh, a, a portion of the trailer to give people a sense of the feel of the show. Let's take a look. Stop. Counterintelligence is the place you want to be right now. And we're up against the most sophisticated enemy in the world. You're my wife. Is that right? Super secret spies living next door. They look like us. They speak better English than we do. They're not allowed to say a single word in Russian once they get here. And you make any noise, I will kill you. Hi. Hi. Cousin Reagan is outraged that the KGB thinks it can kidnap someone with impunity on American soil. Our war is not so cold anymore, Elizabeth. It's probably a coincidence. Or well, they're onto us. And this is what? We take those risks every day, Philip. That's what we do. Ah! <laughs> I love it. Uh, FX is kind of on a roll. They've got Justified, American Horror Story, Louis, It's Always Sunny. They've got a whole bunch of, of great shows. Did you feel, I mean, even just 10 years ago, doing a, a show on a cable channel would have been a sort of second best consolation prize coming, coming off of a network show, uh, having worked for ABC. Did you feel that some of the more exciting stuff is being done in cable at the moment? Absolutely. I think they, you know, they, they do have that greater freedom than the network does. And uh, they're certainly sort of utilizing it to their to their best abilities. FX, I think, ultimately are risk takers. They're not they're not scared. They're not shy. They they will go for it, and and the results have paid off. Mm. And in terms of getting into your role, becoming a spy, did you have any special training for all of the the spy stuff? Uh, we're incredibly lucky. Joe Weisberg, our show uh, creator, is uh, a former CIA operative himself, um, wow. which which sort of makes for incredibly. Um, detailed scripts, basically. And yeah, he, he helped us a little bit with um, counter surveillance work and, and, and basically any question where we say, would this really have happened? He just says, yes, it did. Right. 
And do you spy on anyone on set? Do you deploy any of these techniques that you've used? Uh, there, were, there was a, a period in time where I was trying to p utilize my counter, my counter surveillance mm -hmm. work, and then I realized how bad I was at it. Uh, and then it's all about sort of, it's like being a magician, so sleight of hand work that I'm incredibly clumsy with. So I stopped. I'd love it if you were like Daniel Day-Lewis, you know, and you insisted on everyone treating you as a spy on set the entire time, never breaking character, always spying on what everyone else is doing. That, yes, you've just planted a, an incredibly destructive seed in my <laughs> mind. My, my crew will hate you for that. Uh, one of the interesting things about the show is that it's actually set in a real historical time period. So, I mean, obviously the 1980s. And so you can't, we kind of know what is going to happen yeah. in a way that the characters themselves don't. We also know... I mean, the show, the series can only last for so long because the, you know, the the Cold War ends, right? Is there any is there any trick to sort of playing that? Do you have to suspend your own this, your own knowledge of the ultimate outcome of this kind of geopolitical game? Not really, because I, I think what they they're doing quite cleverly is they are incorporating um, real uh, moments from from history. The, there's an episode that uh, uh, focuses on the um, Reagan assassination attempt. Um, and I think it does, t it, it does two things for the audience. It kind of lets the audience kind of think, oh, we know what's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. And then, and then it, it brings in a, a fresh element to it that I hope the audience went, oh, I didn't know that about the whole Reagan escapade. So I hope it works sort of duplicitly in that way. Mm. Uh, part of the whole Half First Live experience is that we are interactive and participatory and so on and so forth. So people have been commenting. They've been sending in some video questions for you. And by the way, of course, I should say to everybody, if you have any more questions, please leave a comment in the comment well or upload a video comment or a question. Uh, let's take a look at one of them and uh, let's let our viewers ask the questions. Let's take a look. Hi, Matthew. I'm James. I was a big fan of yours when you played Kevin Walker on Brothers and Sisters. After five years, I wanted to know, how did you feel about the ending of the show, especially how it related to your, your character, Kevin and Scotty? Um, the Just explain to people who didn't stay with the show until the very end of what the ending was. The, the ending was certainly abrupt. Um, the, my, myself and uh, my husband on the show were about to... I can't quite remember. We were about to <laughs> adopt um, uh, uh, a young child. And, and we did successfully, I think. God, it's so long ago now. Um, but, but yes. You didn't make up the ending. Just make up. So what happened was the I was abducted. died yes. and was abducted yeah. and then became the Queen of England. Oh, a very wow. bizarre series of events. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes, no. Uh, unfortunately, James, the end did come very, very quickly. Um, and I think there was a lot of sort of scrambling for tying, tying up of, of storylines. So um, I think we were all a little shocked as, as to how quickly that happened. Uh, some more of our uh, some more questions from our viewers. Uh, Lily Poppy says, uh, "Hi, you've directed several episodes of Brothers and Sisters. Would you like to direct episodes of The Americans?" I would absolutely love to direct uh, an episode of, of The Americans. I think it'd be highly unlikely. The uh, the team at Brothers and Sisters were incredibly generous because there were so many actors, such a large ensemble cast. What happened was they would write me a light episode for me to prep, a light episode for me to direct, and a light episode for me to edit. But I don't think just because the few episodes we have of the Americans and my participation in it, they would allow me three light episodes as much <laughs> as I would like them. Uh, Maggie from Paris says, Dear Matthew, from France, I have just discovered the Americans. What a passionate series. Nice to be in series. I love how Carrie and you play, and wow, the episode six was amazing. What do you like the most in the character that you play? Ooh, tough one. I think because that was, that's why I was drawn, I think, to this uh, this one particularly in because he works on so many levels. Uh, at its core, this... This show, I think, is, a, is an incredibly complex relationship that's trying to define itself or figure itself out. And then on top of that, you have all the sort of actor's tick box, which is to play multiple characters within a show, dress up in wigs and mustaches and run around with a gun pretending to be a spy. So it, it does tick a number of sort of boyhood dream boxes and adult <laughs> actor boxes. <laughs> Boyhood almost, dream boxes. Almost a contradiction in terms. I remember my boyhood dream boxes. Which um, are what? My boyhood dream boxes. What were they? Uh, become a pilot. Very good. Um, be on television. One out of two. Or do you have your pilot's Don't license? Don't have a pilot's license. Yet. I do fly a lot. Technically. Is that, does that? Well, you're close. Does that count? You're close. Yeah. Um, what other boyhood checkboxes were there for you? Uh, be a cowboy. 
Yeah. Sort of still waiting to do a Western. That's the beauty of being an actor. Like, you can still keep mm. ticking off the boyhood checkboxes. Well, hopefully, one would hope that everyone can do that throughout their life, can't they? That's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, speaking of boyhood ch checkboxes, you came to prominence on the West End when in 2000, right? Doing The Graduate, playing yeah. Dustin Hoffman's character in The Graduate. Uh, huge production, Kathleen Turner. Uh, what was that like? Was it, were you coming from out of obscurity and kind of skyrocketed to, to superstardom within the, the British theatre community? Uh, how beautifully put. <laughs> skyrocketed to the British theatre community. Uh, yes, absolute plucked from obscurity and yes, placed next to a very naked Kathleen Turner on, mm. on the West End stage eight times a week. It was sort of glorious and terrifying in, in equal measure. What had you done prior to that? Uh, just a lot of theatre uh, in, in and around Britain, sort of, you know, Regional, theater. regional touring productions Amazing. of whatnot, and uh, stints at the National Theatre and the Old Vic, and mm -hmm. earning me stripes. What was growing up like in Wales? Uh, very pleasant for me, you know, like the landscape itself, all green and rolling. It was, you know, it was. I don't give it too rose-tinted a picture, but uh, you know, we we was always playing in woods and fields, and you know, which are now frolicking about with yes, the lambs. Yes, of course, the... of course, it was mm -hmm. idyllic, you know making our own cider and scrumping the apples for it. Um, no, one, no one in this country knows what scrumping means. Myself oh, ste ste stealing apples, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> British colloquialism. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, stealing apples um, and yeah, running around and making a nuisance of yourself. And so then after you suddenly became prominent on the West End in London, what was the next phase of your career? Did you always kind of want to come to the States and try to make it in the States? Was that the end game? Uh, to a degree, you know, I was raised on American television and certainly American movies and the thought of Going to Los Angeles seemed and, you know, still is very exotic, you know, I, sort mm. of, I still get a kick out of driving onto large studio lots and things like that. So yeah, the, a number of British actors, we would then, we would then come over to um, Los Angeles in January, February, March for pilot season and, and as we've touched upon, try and steal jobs from hardworking Americans. Yeah. I mean, it's quite amazing the extent to which you can be quite a big deal outside of the States and nobody here gives a stuff about you or knows anything about you. Do you find that in any way? I don't know, how do you feel about that? Some people find it comforting to be able to leave the, the celebrity behind and to come here where, although you are a celebrity, you're not getting mobbed in the street the way that people might be in the UK. Or then on the other hand, some people feel it's sort of slighted. No, I, enjoy, I love the fact it's, a, it's certainly a level playing field. Uh, I love Los Angeles for the fact that they will give you a chance. You know, they, there's an, they, there are opportunities there. It's like the Klondike to a degree. You know, if you turn up with your shovel or your pick and you hit it hard enough, you might, mm. you know, might get lucky. And, and I think there's a great sense of that there, that you know, you're know, you one sort of hammer swing away from a nugget. So. Well, I mean, that, that goes both ways, doesn't it? I mean, on the one hand, it's great, and on the other hand, 99.9% .9 of people don't make it, so they keep swinging, that, swinging, swinging at the nugget, and it ends up being terribly frustrating, and they become all terribly bitter, because they think they should be able to that's, be in a better place than they are. That's, tr that's true, but, uh, but at least you, you can keep swinging, swinging because there's always that opportunity. There's always, mm. the, I think, there's always the optimism. There's, there is great optimism there. People do go there with their dreams and stick with them for mm. vast amounts of time. Yeah. Uh, Wales sort of punches above its weight in that category, doesn't it? You've got your cabal of, of fellow Welshmen. Did you, did you, you're friends with Michael Sheen, right? Yes, yeah, Michael, yeah. People will know Michael Sheen from The Queen. He played Tony Blair from Frost Nixon. He played David Frost. He did. Uh, what, do you, how do you, what do you make of the, uh, of the Welsh cabal? They, I think the, the Welsh nation, small as it is, from a very early age, there is a tradition of, there's this festival that we have uh, often, which is a poetry singing, poetry reciting, or singing, dancing, all arts encompassing competition where young kids are kicked onto a stage at a very early age and, you know, compete creative, you know, creatively against each other. So we come from a tradition where that's enormously encouraged um, and to a degree it pays off. Yeah. Um do you feel that TVs are, in terms of television versus movies, well actually, no, let me also touch on LA versus New York, because I know that you used to shoot in LA with brothers and sisters, now you shoot out here in New York, and it's the, it's the lot of many people in our lines of work that we have to sort of divide our time between the two, the two coasts. Do you have any thoughts about which one you prefer? I'm certainly in, in the throes of my love affair with this city at the moment, and, and, and loving the sort of where it sits between, you know, having spent a long time in London and, and eight years in Los Angeles, I sort of, I do feel incredibly comfortable here um, for a number of reasons. Um, they are two very different cities. I was discussing it with, with someone and the effect that just purely sunshine has on LA and how that 
how that manifests itself in in a in a laid back attitude or you know slightly more relaxed mm. attitude possibly i don't know each each has the their own pros and cons. I mean, it's quite, it's almost self-consciously laid back though, isn't it? I, 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 it's almost insincerely laid back, I find. People live very hectic lives in, in the entertainment industry. In that's, that's true, and, and you're right. Um, but, you know, I, would, you take, would you take sort of insincere politeness over sort of sincere aggression? No, I'll take New York's fuck you any day. Really? Over, uh, over the false have a nice day of, of California. All right. I mean, there's something to be said. I enjoy, you know, I enjoy, I enjoy insincere pleasantries. It puts, me in a, <laughs> puts me in a happy place. Right, okay. Let's take a look at another uh, viewer question. Uh, do we have one coming up? Hi, Matthew. I'm an acting major in my freshman year at USC. And being that you're also a drama school graduate, I was wondering if you could shed some light on the steps that one should take in, well, leading up to and following their graduation. Thanks. The all too common question, the youngster to the accomplished elder. <clears throat> Tell me, mentor, oh, how shall I be no. successful in the theater? Uh, you have to sleep your way to the top. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Either that or run screaming. I don't know. It's an age-old question that I asked a number of established and alcoholic actors in my time. And, you well, know, alcoholism is a good, is a good st first step. It, it, it is. It is. It's, it's, it's a cert it blunts you from the sort of... Mm. From the from the Herculean rejection that you'll have to get used to, um, I don't know. There's all kinds of things that people say. You should read as much as possible. You should gain as many skills as possible. Be it unicycling, fencing, horse riding. You know, arm yourself with as many skills as possible. Ignore the rejection. I don't. I don't think there is one course. No, works. there really is. And the problem with asking someone who's become successful is that you only have an N of one. Right. I mean, you only have one example to that. You, I mean, you know that it worked in your case. Yeah. But you don't know what bits of your life were the bits that worked, and what no. bits were the, the the stuff that you you succeeded in spite of. No. And 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 a number of times, and I hate to say it, but the, there were those planetary alignments where you go, oh well, you know, the reason I was the reason I was doing I did the graduate was because the actress, the other actress in it, had worked. I'd, I'd made a film with her just prior, and she said, oh, I'm doing this. Play the graduate, you, I'll put you... Do you know what I mean? There's so many yeah. of those elements at play. Yeah, the world's a complicated place. It, it is. It, I, uh, I sat next to Frank Langella on a plane uh, a few years ago when I first came to the States. Uh, he's a, for people who don't know him, he's an Academy Award winning actor, played Nixon in Frost Nixon and so on. Uh, and I was sort of picking his brain about this as well because I was starry eyed and didn't know what I was doing moving to the States either. And he said, there's just no way that you can ever plan any of this stuff. He was like, every, every decision that I've ever made, which was calculated to achieve a particular career outcome, has ended up backfiring. And everything that I did kind of just for the love of it, even Frost, Frost Nixon started as an off-Broadway, uh, sorry, an off-West End show in London, a little thing that he thought was going to turn into nothing, but he did because he, lo he loved the part. Yeah. Uh, uh, when, when people ask me, that's the best that I can possibly answer is his response. It's a good one, and I think, to, to say anything, that's what I would say, is that the day I gave up trying to have an idea or trying to have a plan or a path or, you know, any sort of m manipulation of my career was an incredibly freeing day because you realise you have, absolutely have no real say in the matter so the day you relinquish that the yeah the better it'll be uh well, let me read uh, some comments that are coming online uh tv girl 77 says hey matthew love the americans my whole family watches together across the country and <coughs> texts about what's going on mm -hmm. keep it up thanks fano no says i really enjoy this show i love your range going from cold assassin to a warm and fuzzy father do you do your own fight scenes or do you use a double Thus far, I've done all my own fight scenes. I use a what double. What heroism. I know. I use a double for the emotional stuff, but, uh, <laughs> for, the, but for the stunts, yes. I do my own. Excellent. Um, New, uh, New York Tucker says, I love the Americans. Having said that, I think it's the kind of show that would benefit from having a finite number of episodes. Backhanded compliment there. Are there any plans to self-cancel the series after, say, two or three seasons rather than try to extend plot lines for many, many years? They're probably asking the wrong guy, right? Yes, I think this could run and run um, <laughs> yes. until, until I'm running the CIA in the early 90s. Um, but do you get any sense from the showrunners or from the show creators what they're kind of, if they were able to do an ideal arc and, and close it up you know, with a tidy bow, where that would be? I, I have n no, the, uh, is the honest answer. I have no idea. I'm, sh I'm sure they don't to a degree. Um, like you say, that to, a, to a certain extent, there, there might be a cap on how long we can run on this, you know, given, given our time. Well, on. eventually the Berlin Wall's going to fall. And someone will say, it's all over, chaps. Time to go home. Mm. Go, oh, bugger. 
<laughs> it reminds me a bit of the West Wing, which you know kind of followed. You know, you can only do eight years. There's term limits. Yeah, what are you yeah. Do? It's a presidency. That's it. Yeah, but uh, but I don't know. I think you know the the to a degree we're limited in in the fact that you can't keep running from the feds forever or if you do and we go to the other side we can't run from the KGB forever so who knows yeah um, people have made the obvious uh, analogy to Homeland with the other gigantic spy thriller that everyone's talking about mm. what are your thoughts uh, about the, the about Homeland and about the comparison well, I mean I, you know glad of a, a Homeland comparison if we're in the if the people are holding us in the same light or the same caliber thank you very much um, Damien Lewis, who I always say is Welsh, um, you know, <laughs> basically. Wait, he's not Welsh, is he? Sort he's of. English. Sort of. Wikipedia him. Well, you could, ba you could, I mean, you know that Americans are going to believe whatever you say, anything that is not from Damien Lewis America. is Welsh. <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah. He's as Welsh as I am. <laughs> yes, possibly Welsher. Mm -hmm. um, this, uh, yeah, it was, it was great. I think initially I was concerned that everyone's going, oh, are you new, the, the new Homeland? And Homeland was this juggernaut runaway success. Right. Ago. If people tune in, they go, well, this isn't Homeland because mm. we are a different show. You can, there was concern about that. Uh, you know, we are a different concern. I think, I think Homeland was so rooted and so uh, based in, in, in very up-to-date reality. You know, whereas our show, we're a little, there are you know, fantastical elements. We ask the audience to come with us a bit on this journey. So mm. there are, you know, you can go on forever about the, the comparisons and differences. I mean, is it fun playing the 80s? You, you know, you mentioned that you're not, you know, you're not contemporary, whereas Homeland is very, very cutting edge. There's a kind of a, I almost think that this is the campness. first. A slight campness, but I, I, I mean, in a very good way, mm. uh, that this is sort of the first era in which, where I, in which the 80s has, has finally become far enough into the past to be able to treat it as history. Yes. You know, and I, I'm always staggered by how recent the technological advancements are. Like the, the, in the 2004 election, which still is reasonably fresh in my mind between Kerry and, and Bush, mm. YouTube didn't exist. And when 9-11 mm. happened, there were no iPods. No iPods. Wow. Like, it's incredibly recent. This, what we take for granted with all of our gadgets is incredibly recent, so it's kind of nice and nostalgic to be able to dip back into the 80s and go, I actually remember the 80s. There is. No, I, mean, iPods. You know, I know. The, you know, because the, I, I remember the sort of, you know, the, the old school phone, the, ro um, God, what are they called? Rotary dial Rotary phones. Rotary dial phones. That, and, you, you know, when you're doing a scene and if you get a zero, you're just like, oh, God, you know, there's yeah, to be take a, forever. intermission. There has yeah. to be a commercial break by the time you get back. Well, to in things. Australia, the, the 911 emergency line is zero, zero, zero. So back in the, the, the dialing rush is ridiculous. Yes. The, the murderer has stabbed you in the back with an axe by the time yeah, you've got, gotten through the, all the I zeros. I think that's a, that's, a, that's a government choice. Yeah, like, look, <laughs> must we, be. Yeah, we can, we can cut down on how many ambulances we need. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's Thank not you. bad. Thank you. Mr. Accents. Yes. No, I think the, the beauty of our show, and I think a reason why they set it in the 80s was because, you know, when they bring the espionage stuff onto set, and we're like, what? Is this in, are we in the Second World War? Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. 418, mm. you know, it's, mm. it's so primitive that it, it, it relies on the human ingenuity, you know, those elements, which make it a little more interesting uh, to yeah. a degree, I suppose. But it's nice not to have that luxury of going, oh, I'll just call, or sat phone, or mm. sat cameras, just pick this up, or I'll just... Yeah, it's good old-fashioned intelligence. Old the way intelligence used to be, used to damn be. it. You could have a magnifying glass and a, and yes. a large car. A large car, all right. Well, the cars yeah. we drive are huge. Yeah. All like, right. you know, the, you, if you read the script, it says, Philip parks and gets out, you're like, forget it. Yeah. For, forget <laughs> that. Take, That'll take days. Take, yeah, just don't shoot it. No. He just walks into the house. Or just, or just have me come out of a car. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, let's take a look at uh, another video question from one of our viewers. Hi, Matthew. It's, uh, you know, Suzette. <laughs> uh, this is my question. What's the biggest difference for you playing the role of Philip nowadays and the role of Boyo at the beginning of your career? Good luck with the show. Goodbye. Bye. Hi, Suzette. Uh, I know Suzette. You have oh. to explain the, uh, the, this Suzette thing, otherwise the tabloids are going to be full of salacious rumours about you and Suzette. Well, and right they may be. Uh, no, she, she very kindly runs uh, uh, a very nice website. That, um, is it a fan site? It, yeah. Yes, it is. It is. It is. Welsh modesty allows me to mm. almost agree with you. But yeah, yes, no, it is. please. But feel yes, free it is. to override your Welsh modesty it, it, with a bit of recently picked up Los Angeles hubris. Yes, it hurts. Um, uh, yes, and Boyo, the part she, she mentioned, was the first job I ever did coming out of drama school, which uh, was an incredibly dark piece called House of America about a young boy trying to 
figure out the truth of his family and tragically finding out that his mother murdered his father. Um, so uh, the differences are far and varied and, and ranging. But um, I think to a degree there is there's a similarity in Philip and Hoboyo, whereas the two of them are trying to figure out where the truth lies. I don't think Philip, my partner, the Americans, is defined any longer by being a KGB agent, which, you know, that indoctrination at an early age set them up to be. I think he goes, I'm not defined by my job. Mm. Um, so he, he, like Boyo Suzette, is a truth seeker himself, trying to figure out what's real and what's not anymore. Uh, do you want to do a film? Love to. Love a film. Love, love the sort of immediacy and the sort of quick arc of... Uh, film, whereas, you know, television is fantastic, but, you know, there are times when you go, oh, remember what happened in episode two, and you mm. go... Yeah, but you didn't even remember the end of Brothers and Sisters. No. Was it... Oh, it was two years ago. Two years ago. Two years. Another question from one of our viewers, Sin66 says, who is your favourite actor slash actress? I think growing up, I was a sort of, I was a bit of a cliche in that De Niro was just a huge influence on me. Um, and all those boys, sort of Pacino and, and Duval, all the, all the sort of American cinematic greats. Really. Not British actors? Burton, Richard Harris, uh, Peter O'Toole, just for their drinking prowess more yes, than anything course. else. Yeah, um, yeah my um, taste vary. Depend, you know, I'll see a film and I'll say, oh, that's my favorite actor from now mm. on in. So it depends who I've seen recently. Yep. All right. You have the memory of a goldfish. I do, which is a fantastic way to live life. <laughs> That's great, isn't no it? No guilt. I know. Me too. I Thanks know. so much for being here, Matthew. Thank Wonderful you. to talk to you. Congratulations on the success of the Americans. Thank you. Uh, you can stay tuned. Let us know what you think about all of this. You can leave a comment in the comment. Well, you can fire us off an email, of course. And we've got plenty more conversations coming up next, courtesy of Cadillac. <laughs>